Hello there. Welcome to Delight Channel. Timak is still my name. Delight stands for Development, Empowerment, and Leadership Initiative. Our vision: world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. And um, we have been focusing on a very, very important topic that I'm sure affects everybody, including you. And that topic is money management. So my question for you this week: Would you like to be financially independent? Would you like to be in the 5% or at worst, the 15% category. What is 5? What is 15? Yes, I gave three numbers last week. 5%, 15%, and 80%. If you do not know what I'm talking about, please go check and then come watch this video so that everything can add up for you. But for you who have been here since the beginning of this series, what we are saying simply is that you too can be financially independent. How? watch the way your money goes out from our last videos we've identified four different channels through which your money can go out number one is consumption number two is to create assets number three is to create liabilities and number four is to give to charities and we spent a number of minutes focusing on consumption and if there's anything you need to take away from that it is the fact that what is left after consumption and whatever you do with it is what will determine whether you will be financially independent. So, POSA for you. How do you get to the point where you are financially independent? Last week, we answered the first leg of the question, which is watch your consumption. And if you have tried and it looks like you are unable, you need to please go and examine your lifestyle. Watch the big ticket things that are taking away your inflows and ask yourself whether they are avoidable or not avoidable. As an example, the schools that your children are attending, can you afford it? Are you just doing it because that is the school where all my friends' children are attending? The kind of apartment where you live in, can your budget, can your income, can it accommodate it? The kind of clothes that you buy, the kind of car that you ride, those externalities that you are currently investing your money into. No, 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 the word is not invest. That you are currently spending your money on. Are they really necessary? I've got news for you. If you will only follow the advice that I'm sharing on this channel, ultimately, you will not only be able to do these things that we are talking about now, you will be able to do them on a bigger scale and you will be able to do them on a more sustainable manner. So, the idea is not for you to live at that level. The idea is that you are at the point where you can live at that level in a sustainable manner. The question then comes, how? The how is by creating assets and that leads me to the next section of this conversation we have taken care of consumption now i want to take two of these other channels together because they are two sides of the same coin that is creating assets and creating liabilities so let's get the basics right when we talk about assets how do you define assets i'm an accountant and the traditional definition of asset will be something you own, something that is yours, that can last you for a while. And when you talk about liability, liabilities will be something you owe that you have an obligation to pay back. But pause that definition for a minute and let me flip it for you and give you a more mind-opening and possibly life-transforming definition. And this came from the author of that very famous book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, where he defined asset as, wait for it, whatever pays you. Yes, asset is not just what you own. An asset in the context of financial independence is whatever pays you. And what is liability? Liability is whatever costs you. Ooh, that's not usual. So let's slowly walk through it. So, 
If you own a house or you own a car, do you have assets or you have liabilities based on the new definition? It depends. It depends on whether they are paying you or they are costing you. Take as an example, yes, it is your house. Yes, you built it. Yes, you are not paying anybody rent, but nobody is also paying you anything either. So every week, every month, every year, there is always something you have to spend on that house. It may be the roof, it may be the plumbing, it may be the doors, it may be the light. It could be anything. But on a daily basis, that house is costing you something to keep it going. And I'm sorry to, bob, to bust your bubble, but that is not an asset. That is a liability. Flip it and then imagine you have that same accommodation, but you've let it out and you are earning rent. Then what does it become? It becomes an asset. Number one, you do not have to be the one spending all the money to run the place because a part of it will be taken care of by the tenant. Secondly, on a monthly, biannually, twice a year, once in two years, whatever interval, you are earning something. Now, imagine what you can do when you have a set. Let's go to that of a car. A car, unfortunately, is not an asset if you want to be financially independent. Why? It will continue to cost you. You are, re you are repairing this, you are servicing the car, you are paying this insurance, you are paying these government taxes and levies. Constantly, your car costs you. But imagine a situation where that car is being put to use for transport services. Then what do you have? The car will not only pay for those running costs. There will be something left over in your pocket on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis, whatever the structure that you are putting in place for your return. Therefore, what are we saying so far in this video? We are saying that it is not just enough to control consumption because no matter how hard you try, if you cut your consumption, if you are not adding back into the pool of the income, whatever you have left will still finish. So the second building block, what's the first? The first is that you control consumption. What is the second? The second is that you create assets. You create assets by putting what you have been able to save from consumption into productive uses such that regularly additional income comes into your pocket with which we can now talk about what would you do with it. Ooh, take a breath. Does that mean that you can have a life where it is only asset that you are creating? Unfortunately not. We must still live in a house. We must still have cars. Maybe if you don't even have vehicles, you still have to pay for transportation. We have to buy clothes. We have to eat. The point is not that liability creation can be zero. The point is that you need to prioritize creating assets over creating liability. Which means that when you have a pool of funds, and we will come to the point where we break down how you create assets. But for a moment, when you have a pool of funds and there are instant gratification you can get by the latest uh, home theater or go and repaint your apartment or invest in this brand new vehicle if you are smart and you are ready to be financially independent your first interest will be to hold those liability creation and invest that fund in something that pays you back and like i said if you get your investment right it will pay you returns that will not only buy those gadgets and create those liabilities that you want to create, it will create it at a higher level, it will create it in a more sustainable manner because 
you will now be creating liabilities within the context of a balanced budget. That is where I'm going to drop the anchor for this week. But the question remains unanswered. Yes, now I get it. When I control consumption and I free up funds for asset creation, I can get on my way to financial independence. What are the nitty gritties of how to create assets? How do I go about it? What are the steps I need to take? What kind of assets can I even create? That will be the focus of our next video. I'm certain you know somebody who needs to watch this video. We need to break the cycle of poverty. We need to stop the system where it's an in and out. It comes in, it goes out, it comes in, it goes out, and we create no value. If you want to be financially independent, you must make it a date with me next week as I go deeper into, this, into the concept of asset creation and then hopefully equip you with information and skills and knowledge that will help you to certainly be on your way to living either as a 15% or better still as a 5%. Thanks for being here once again this week. T Mark is still my name. Don't forget to join me on the Telegram channel where the conversation continues. And whatever you do, never forget that all I'm trying to do is what? Make a little difference. Thanks for being here this week and see you next week. Ciao, ciao.